Okay, good morning everyone. Uh, welcome to our third topic in Introduction to Psychology. So our topic for today is all about the neurobiological basis of the human behavior. Okay, so before we will start, uh, let me introduce to you our learning objective for this session. So at the end of this session or at the end of this discussion, you will be able to understand the different parts of the human nervous system. Second is to explain the functions of the human nervous system. Third one is to differentiate the functions of the different parts of the brain and to know the structures and functions of our neurons. Okay, so to understand the human uh, or the human behavior, no, uh, we must look into the uh, parts of the brain no, which are responsible for, let's say, for example, in terms of dealing with personality, we have the attitudes, what are the responses na mayroon siya, and some other processes. Makikita po natin yan siya, or pwede po yan siya i-explain through physiology, no? more specifically in terms of dealing with the study of the nervous system. So, okay, what is nervous system? Nervous system is the most complex and elaborated system of structures in the human body. And these are all composed of the group of interrelated and interrelating units that enables the man to receive stimuli from that of his or her environment and to make a necessary and appropriate response response to such stimuli and it regulates the behavior of the whole individual to enable him to survive so you know the main purpose of our nervous system is to coordinate all of those uh, activities in the human body and it enables the body to respond and to adapt to the changes from both inside of his body or let's say outside of his body. So it's the environment. So napaka-importante po na alamin natin ito siya because all the behaviors, we have personalities, attitudes, and even yung mga disorders, we can explain through this uh, uh, topic now which is the nervous system. So as you can see in the picture here, this is how it looks like. This is our nervous system now, which is consists of the brain and we have the spinal cord here and all of those peripheral nerve here. So in our senior high school biology no, and also in our zoology, uh, we are taught that the brain and the spinal cord are part of our central nervous system and this peripheral nerve here is uh, part of our yun nga, peripheral nervous system no but this is our peripheral nervous system is not just limited to those uh, nerves that is located outside or extended outside of our spinal cord but also some of these nerves are also located in this brain no so kung Ito siya, nakakon kasi ito siya, no? hindi natin makikita. But on the other side, makikita po natin yung different cranial nerves, which is also part of our peripheral nervous system. So let us look into the major divisions of our nervous system before we will talk about its basic unit, which is the neuron. So as you can see in this uh, figure, always remember that when we talk about of the divisions of the nervous system, it is always consists of the two main divisions also called as the central nervous system, this one, and we have the peripheral nervous system, this one. Our central nervous system is uh, consists of the brain and the spinal cord structurally. While when we talk about of the peripheral nervous system, they are consist of, structurally speaking, 12 cranial nerves and 12 pairs of, or 31 pairs of the spinal nerves. So remember, in terms of the structure, our peripheral nervous system is consist of the, the cranial nerves and we have the spinal nerves. But in terms of its major function, 
the most common division for the peripheral nervous system is they are consist of the autonomic nervous system and the somatic nervous system. So what is the function of our autonomic nervous system? They are responsible for the involuntary movement of our body. So since it's involuntary, that means wala po tayong control. Naga, ito yung tinatawa natin na uh, nag-ooperate po siya even without of our consciousness. Even though hindi natin sinasabi it operates. So what are the examples of our internal organ? For example, our heart. Okay, our heartbeat, I mean our heart is nagabit po siya no, without even uh, or with even the absence of our consciousness about this activity. So kahit natutulog tayo, still gumagana po yung uh, autonomic nervous system natin. So we can further divide it, our autonomic nervous system into two. We have the sympathetic nervous system and we have the parasympathetic nervous system. So, nag-a-activate po si sympathetic nervous system when we are in the emergency state. And it is also called as the thora thoracolumbar, no? Since uh, makikita po natin itong sympathetic nervous system in the thoracic part and in the lumbar part of our later pag-usapan natin no? of our spinal cord. While when we say naman na parasympathetic nervous system, ito po siya is nag-ooperate po siya as uh, the rest and digest. No? And also they are located on the craniosacral parts of our nervous system which is later makikita natin kung saan siya uh, I mean, malulokit natin kung saan ito siya banda na structure. So, in the rest and digest, kung dito sa kanina, kay parasympathetic is nag activate siya during the emergency state. For example, hinabol ka ng aso. So, the tendency is that magkakaroon tayo ng physiological changes such as the dilation of the eyes or the pupil of the eyes, increase in heart rate, increase in pulse rate, and some other physiological changes. So, right after, this is considered as for the preparation, ha? We need this fight or flight in order for us to adapt or to survive to our environment. So kapag ka mapangani po yung environment natin, so yung si sympathetic nervous system is nag activate po siya. Then pag about kay parasympathetic nervous system, uh, since rest and digest siya, nangyayari po siya later, right after mangyari po ni sympathetic nervous system. And its main purpose is, to um, restore again the energy na nabawa sa atin during the time of emergency state. So, in the parasympathetic nervous system, kung dito nagdadilate yung pupil ng eyes natin, this time, magkukonstrict na po siya. So, babalik po unti-unti into the normal functioning yung body natin. Kaya tinawag siya na rest and digest. Now, let's go back to another major divisions of our peripheral nervous system according to its function. We have the somatic nervous system. And our somatic nervous system is um, there composes of the afferent nerves and also called as the sensory nerves. And also we have the efferent nerves also called as the motor nerves. Okay, so sin ano po yung main function <coughs> somatic nervous system. Ang ginagawa po niya is siya po yung nagko-control ng muscles and uh, also it is considered as the voluntary. So that means we are able to control all of these actions that we have because of our somatic nervous system. So for example, kung gusto mong kumain, uh, you're able to control, you will be able to control all of uh, the actions that you need in order for you to eat no so that is part of our somatic nervous system remember autonomic they are involuntary we have no control over this one so it's uh naga continue lang siya na naga activate without even our consciousness uh or be, being aware of the activities no while for the somatic we are aware of all of these um actions that we have so remember this is the or these are the major divisions of our nervous system. 
P CNS and PNS. CNS is composed of the brain and the spinal cord. PNS is composed of, structurally speaking, cranial nerves. We have 12 cranial nerves located on the extensions of the brain. And we have the spinal nerves located at the extension of our spinal cord. So these are all extension kaya tinawag siya na peripheral nervous system. And again, they are consist of the autonomic and the somatic nervous system. Autonomic, involuntary. Somatic, voluntary. Autonomic nervous system can further divide it again into a sympathetic nervous system or the fight or flight or emergency state. Then we have the parasympathetic nervous system as the rest and digest system. No? So responsible siya for restoring all the energies na nagagamit natin during the emergency state. So what is a good example of uh, the activation of the sympathetic nervous system? So for example, pag nagkaroon ng sunog sa kapitbahay, mapapansin mo na uh, kapag during the emergency state, nadadala mo yung ref ninyo na sobrang bigat. No? But during the time na nagkaroon na tayo ng uh, kumbaga safe na tayo, then the tendency is hindi na natin mabubuhat yung ref na daladala natin during the emergency state. It is because nawala na yung effect ng sympathetic nervous system natin also called as the emergency state or the fight or flight state. Okay, so let's talk about this one by one. Okay, so this is the structure of our nervous system. So as you can see, this CNS here is composed of this uh, color orange structure here which is uh, the brain and we have also the spinal cord in this area here the tube like structure and again brain so these two organs composes our uh, central nervous system now when we talk about of the peripheral nervous system they are peripheral no that means they are located outside of this central nervous system. So as you can see, lahat po nitong nasa, uh, it, lahat po ng structure of nervous system which are located outside of our, this um, part of our central nervous system, the spinal cord, lahat po na makikita natin outside of this spinal cord is, yan po yung tinatawag natin na peripheral nervous system. And sabi ko nga kanina, yung peripheral nervous system natin is hindi lang po natin yung makikita outside the uh, spinal cord but also they are also located on uh, some other parts of the brain. And when you talk about of the PNS or peripheral nervous system, ito po yung makikita natin na peripheral nervous system outside our spinal cord. And ano po yung tawag natin sa peripheral nervous system na to? This is what we call the spinal nerve because they are located outside the spinal cord. Pag sinabi naman natin na cranial nerve, they are located outside the brain. Pero hindi ko po nakalagay dito yung structure, no? So just remember, when I talk about of the peripheral nervous system, they are located outside both of our brain and the spinal cord. Outside the spinal cord, spinal nerve. Outside the brain, cranial nerve. And all in all, we have at least 12 cranial nerves in the brain. And all in all, we have spinal nerve of 31 pairs that is located outside again of our spinal nerve cord. And again, ano nga po yung purpose ng, uh, s ng nervous system natin? So, it coordinates all the activities in the human body and enables the body to respond and to adapt to the changes both inside and outside his or her own body. So, as you can see here uh, in the picture, for example, malalaman mo na tutusukin kita ng ball pen because of our nervous system. So, for example, natusok ka accidentally or sinasadya, pupunta po yung information dyan, pupunta dito, dyan, hanggang sa papasok na siya kay spinal cord. Then, 
pa-up. So, ganun po yung information, ganun po yung takbo ng information. Tapos, bababa ulit yung information, papunta doon kay muscle. Then, pag umabot siya kay muscle, dayon, muri akta, muri spanta. Diba, ang gingon ako, the purpose of our nervous system, one of the purpose is for us to respond to the changes in our both inside and outside of our body. So, this is considered as the outside of the body stimulus. Pag tusok, tayo, tanggalo na to itong kamot. It is because ang information is nag-travel papunta dito, papunta kay brain. Ini-interpret niya yung stimulus as something that is dangerous, that causes pain. So, bababain siya, hantod, murispan tayo, tatanggalo na to itong kamot. So, that is the main purpose of uh, our nervous system. Okay, so this is uh, another uh, representation of our nervous system. No? So as you can see, we have the brain and the spinal cord, which consists of our uh, central nervous system. And we have also the peripheral nervous system, which is uh, which are consists of the ganglion, that is uh, a group of fibers now located outside this um spinal cord and those nerves that are extended throughout of the human body. So, paano ba nagkakaroon ng transmission or paano ba nagkakaroon ng uh, interpretation of those environmental and even internal um, stimulus? So, for example, pag sumakit yung chan mo, paano, mo, uh, paano siya ni-interpret ng brain mo? Paano pumapasok sa brain mo? Paano mo malalaman na masakit yung chan mo? Or Let's say, paano mo malalaman na busog ka na? And paano mo malalaman, for example, na malamig yung environment mo? So, all of the answer of this one, uh, all of the answer for this question relies on the basic unit of the nervous system, which is also called as the neurons. So, before natin pag-uusapan yung function ng neurons natin, even the structure of our neuron, uh, Review po muna natin yung mga nalir natin in our zoology. So, this is, for example, this is the picture of uh, a human. As you can see, it's a human organism is consists of the different organ systems, such as yung mga circulatory systems, uh, we have respiratory systems, skeletal systems, and some other systems. Now, these systems are consist of the group of organs with the same function or with the interrelated functions, no? Then, these organs are consist of the tissues and tissues are made up of cell, which is considered as the basic structural, functional, and biological unit of all living organism. So, always remember that the basic unit is our cells and cells or a group of cells is uh, what make up our tissues and a group of tissues are what make up our organs and a group of organs are what make up our organ systems. Then our organ system is what consists the organism, particularly the human organism in our example. So, ano ba yung mga different organ systems in the human body? As you can see here, there are some, uh, here are some of the different organ systems na makikita natin in the human body. So, some, hindi, pa, hindi, na, hindi po nakikita, hindi po makikita dyan yung ibang organ system. No? So, as you can see, we have the uh, circulatory system. We have digestive or excret and excretory system. We have the endocrine system the immune or the lymphatic system, the muscular system, urinary system, and hindi ko nalagay, we have the skeletal system, respiratory uh, system, no? And the last one, our main focus is more of the nervous system. So as you can see here, di ba sinabi ko kanina, lahat-lahat nitong system na to, they are all made up of a group of organs. And organs are made up of tissues, and tissues are made up of cell. And when I talk about of the basic structural and functional unit of the living organism, uh, in terms of the nervous system, siya po yung pinaka-unique ang structure na nyo, 
structure niya, no? So, in fact, siya yung may pagka-complicated na structure. And this complicated structure helps the cell to communicate uh, from one cell to another cell, no? So, from one neuron to another neuron. So, yan po yung function. Bakit meron tayong may pagka-complex na, pagka na structures of the neuron or the nerve cell? Okay. So, basahin ko muna. Neurons are the basic functional unit of the nervous system. There are, uh, there are about 100 billions of neurons in the brain and we have the basic parts are, as you can see, we have the dendrites, the soma, also called as the cell body, the axon hillock, the axon, the myelin sheath, and the last one is the axon terminal. So we will talk about this one. Remember that our nervous system allows us to communicate uh, our body uh, towards the brain, no? uh, then he interprets the ni brain, then we make a particular response depende sa kung ano yung mayroon environmental or let's say internal stimulus mayroon tayo. So, pag tinuso ka, for example, ng ball pen, malalaman mo kaagad na tinuso ka and magre-respond ka kaagad. No? So, meron siyang... Um, meron tayong tinatawag na corresponding responses na no? depende kung ano yung stimulus na dumarating sa iyo. Okay, so let's talk about on the basic structural and functional uh, or let's let's talk about the structures and the basic functions of our neurons. Let's go to the next figure. Okay, so let's proceed in this uh illustration. No? So, kanina, di ba sinabi ko na uh, lahat ng information coming from our uh, environment, the external one, and we have even the internal one, no? Uh, kung may mga masasakit na uh, part sa body mo, i-communicate ka agad niya yan kay brain para makagawa tayo ng particular responses. So, for example, nakaapak ka dito, for example, ng matinik, such as um, as a thumb uh, thumb tax no or let's say natuso ka dito or nasugatan ka dito ng uh, kutsilyo so malalaman mo kaagad din siya or may interpret kaagad din yung brain kasi yung information magta-travel po siya papunta diyan okay this one papunta kay spinal cord then right after niya kay spinal cord i-interpret kaagad siya ni brain pero hindi po lahat ng information is papunta kay brain. For some information, let's say, yun nga no, nagkaroon tayo ng pain, so the tendency is, magre-react ka agad yung kamay natin. No? For example, ito yung affected area, ito yung affected na muscle or skin. Dahil yun, mo-react ang atong kamot because of some of the information are in fact interpreted in this area lang, which is our spinal cord. But for some, um, kailangan po siyang uh, mapunta sa taas no, or kailangan siya i-communicate dun sa brain natin. Pero most of the information which uh, may involve po yung reflexes, usually dito lang po siya ini-interpret. Kaya nga sobrang bilis natin mag-react, it is because ang interpretation is hindi na po kailangan pumunta kay brain. Dito na lang po siya. Then, babalik. Then, tatanggalin natin ang kamay natin. So, remember, ang information, dapat pasaka na siya then interpretation, then babalik ulit. Okay. For us to make a particular responses, for us to make unnecessary responses on that particular external stimulus. And paano po ba siya nangyayari? Paano nagko-communicate yung mga neurons natin dyan? Kasi nga, pag nag-draw tayo ng maliit na sample dito, gamay ra kaya na sample, mukha tadira. Let's say mukha tadira sa brain. Gamay kaya na sample. Ingan niya nga itong makita. This one. So, kanina nag-draw tayo ng sample, no? So, you can see here. Uh, di ba kanina may pain dito? Pain receptor. May mga pain receptors kasi tayo dyan. Uh, in fact, uh, gi-upload ko na yun siya sa page natin. Uh, some of those uh, receptors are, let's say, uh, katong ginatawag nato na Messner's uh, corpusol. And 
we have also these pacinian corpuscles so these are all parts of the skin receptors and also we have the thermoreceptors and we have nociceptors so for example for the pain again sabi ko pasaka na siya diri ah papunta diri ah so paano ba nagko-communicate yung neurons natin the answer for that is pag nagdraw ako ng sample sobrang liit lang para makita ko for example kung ano yung laman ng uh, or ano yung content ng neurons natin or nervous system natin ang makikita natin is this one the basic unit of the uh, the basic functional or structural unit of our nervous system so as you can see here uh, this is uh, the a typical picture of a neuron okay or a nerve cell which is again uh, mauni siyang reason nga nung mag-communicate ang atong neuron because of its uh, complex structure. No? So, unlike the other cells, pag other cells ng manggut kay murag, uh, same-same lang ilang itsura. No? So, they are, uh, mura siya ka ng, uh, usually bilog lang siya no? in the animal cell. But in the nerve cell, ganito pa yung structure niya. So, as you can see here, uh, kanina, we talk about... Uh, that it's a complex no but in different parts so what are these parts we have the dendrites the soma the axon hillock the axon the myelin sheath and the axon terminal or the button terminal no so as you can see here this is what we call the dendrites these are what we call the dendritic branch okay so niri receive po ni ng information natin. So, for example, tinusok yung kamay mo. So, yung information from the other neuron is isisan po yan siya ni neuron papunta kay next neuron. Hindi po nag-attach o hindi po talaga um, uh, hindi po yan sila magkadikit. No? So, meron po tayo dito ang tinatawag ng small gap called the synapses. It's a small gap no? It's, uh, na kung saan nagjo-jump yung messages or impulses going here to the next neuron uh, then pupunta siya kay dendrites again dendrites is considered as the receiver so siya po yung nagre-receive ng impulses or messages from that of the other neurons so so remember okay sabi ko nga kanina tinusok okay pag tusok yung information pupunta siya dito kay neuron from that of the skin receptor such as nociceptors pupunta po yan dito no this one then isisend niya papunta dito kay um dendrites remember this is the neuron 1 neuron 2 and neuron 3 or neuron A B and C so yung information po pupunta po yan dito kay yung information from that of the neuron A pupunta po yan siya dito kay neuron C so papunta yan siya dyan then in this soma magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na signal summation wherein lahat ng messages coming from this area or coming from this neuron A and let's say for the neuron B also is a sum up niya so pag add up ng information dito papasok na siya dito kay axon hilak. So, this is what we call the axon hilak. Dendrites, dendritic branch, synapses, soma, nucleus, axon hilak. So, si axon hilak naman, it serve as the integrator. So, siya po yung nag-integrate ng signals coming from this uh, soma. So, yung sisoma po natin, uh, just like also the typical cells, it contains also those organelles no, na makikita natin for uh, each cells. No? And as you can see here, meron pa rin po tayong nucleus. And this nucleus, according to our genetic influence and biological basis of the human behavior na topic, eh, makikita po natin dyan yung mga 23 pairs of chromosomes natin and some other organelles no including the nucleus so andyan pa rin po siya so pagpunta ng signal dito di ba galing siya dito kay dendritic branch nag travel siya dito for signal summation then signal integration ini-integrate na niya lahat-lahat ng information in this particular structure called the axon hilak now the message now will go in this way 
and this area here is what we called the axon remember this is the axon and axon is covered by these fatty materials called the myelin sheath so this is in the red one this is what we call the myelin sheath and as you can see with the travel po dito yung impulses or yung message papunta dito then until such time na mabot siya kay mauna siyang ginatawag nato na structure called the button terminal or the axon terminal some call it axon button terminal no which is in this area here now it contains what we call the vesicles and these vesicles itong maliliit na to it contains the different neurotransmitters so pag-uusapan natin ano yung meron sa neurotransmitter mamaya okay gets so again let's review the different parts this is the dendritic branches this is the dendrites this is the soma this is the axon hillock this is the axon this one is the myelin sheath and sino yung nagpo-produce ng myelin sheath natin this one this is what we call the schwann cells so schwann cells po yan siya so remember when you talk about of the axon they serve as the conduction or the main purpose is for conduction it conducts the information or signals away from the soma so conduct away from the soma or cell body while this one this uh, myelin sheath here the main purpose is for insulation so just like also with that of yung kuryente natin binabalutan po natin yan no? so it act as the insulator conductor si axon insulator si myelin sheath okay so when we talk about of the nodes of ranvier naman this is what we call the nodes of ranvier so it is the space between each myelin sheath and its purpose is also to speed up the conduction of that impulses going down to the axon button terminal so Pagkatusok sa iyo, pupunta again yung information, papunta dyan, papunta dyan, papunta doon, hanggang sa maabot siya doon kay axon button terminal. So, remember, axon button terminal contains the vesicles. And these vesicles, um, it's a sac structure, no? sac-like structure which uh, contains the different neuro transmitter. So, pag-uusapan natin mamaya kung ano yung mayroon sa neurotransmitter. And in fact, ito yung focus sa psychology, no? Because through this uh, structure, makikita natin yung pinagkakaiba ng personality ng isang tao or even those people who are suffering from psychological disorder or let's say mental disorder and some other types of disorder, no? So, andyan po natin siya makikita. So, this is the basic structural unit of our nervous system this is what we call the neuron or the nerve cell okay so in terms of the neural zone naman ito po yung area uh, na makikita natin sa nervous system no i mean sa neuro, neuron structure no so in our powerpoint presentation mayroon po tayo nakalagay dyan na four functional zones and these are the signal reception, we have signal integration, the signal conduction, and the signal transmission. So as you can see in this uh, axon, particular axon, makikita po natin kung saan makikita. Uh, makikita po natin dyan yung tinatawag natin na signal reception. So as you can see, signal reception is makikita natin Ang, ang part po ng signal reception natin is what we call the dendrites and we have the soma. So, this one, signal reception po yung tawag natin dyan or signal reception zone. From the word reception, they are the one who is, uh, they're the one which is responsible for the receiving of all the information coming from the different neurons. Okay, when we say naman of 
the signal integration, our axon helix act as our signal integration. Sabi ko nga kanina, ini-integrate po niya yung information papunta dito. Okay. So, when you talk about of the signal conduction naman, dito na. When I say kasi na conduction, uh, or yes, it's conduction, uh, the information is uh, palabas, no? Palayo kay Soma. So, that is why it is being called as the conduction. So, our axon is considered as conductor. It conducts the information away from the soma. So, papunta po yan doon. Okay? So, as you can see, this one here, the structure called axon is considered as the signal conduction. Now, in terms of the signal integration, or the signal transmission rather, it's now in the axon button terminal. Bakit siya tinawag na signal transmission? Kasi siya na po, pag abot ng message dito, iti-trigger po niya yung vesicles dyan, which contains what we call the neurotransmitters. Okay, so, pag abot ng signal dito, pag-trigger, lalabas na this time si neurotransmitter. So, this is the dendrites and the soma are what we call the signal reception zone. The signal integration, signal conduction, and we have signal transmission. Yan po yung tawag natin dyan sa kanila. So, by the way, in terms of the synapse, uh, like in, in terms of the signals or in terms of the impulses, um, pagabot po dito ng impulses, ang term na po natin na ginagamit dyan is we have the action potential. So, bakit siya action potential? Kasi in-integrate na po siya ni tinatawag natin na axon hilak. Okay, so as you can see, uh, sabi dito sa neural zone, no? strong signals is converted into an action potential. So, pag abot niya dito, during the integration, makoconvert na po yung action, uh, makoconvert na po yung tinatawag natin na signal or impulses into action potential so by the way prior to the action potential impulses no mayroon pa po tayong uh, other term for the signals na pumapasok dito but we will not talk about those kasi uh, medyo uh, kung ano yun siya no baka malito pa tayo may kaaban kasi yung topic na yun no like ito yung tinatawag natin na kung ano um IPSP and uh, EPSP. No? So, excitatory postsynaptic potential. So, this one, excitatory postsynaptic potential and inhibitory postsynaptic potential. Pero pag abot niya dito, it becomes now the action potential. Hindi po siya, hindi po siya action potential. It's action potential. Nag-travel po siya papunta kay action. Pababa doon kay tinatawag natin na um, axon button terminal. So, kanina nakita na po natin yung basic structural and functional unit of our nervous system, no? which is uh, our neuron or the nerve cell. Now, we can classify this neuron according to its structure. And what are these structure? Kung makikita po natin sa image dyan, ayan po, okay? We have, it can divide it, or we can divide this one, or classify this one into multipolar neuron. So, in the multipolar neuron, as you can see, there are many extensions from the cell body. So, this one, there are a lot of um, extensions here and these are what we call the dendrites no this is what we call the multipolar neuron for the bipolar neuron naman we have the one axon and one dendrite so as you can see here this is how it looks like bipolar no so from pole to pole as you can see here this is the dendrites also called as the receiver and we have the axon also called as the conductor and for this one, for the unipolar neuron naman, it has short single process leaving the cell body. So as you can see here, this is the dendrites, this is the cell body, and this is the single process na yari, no? 
this one peripheral and unipolar neuron okay so these are the basic structure of our neurons in terms of its a function also we can classify this uh, neuron according to its major function and these are the sensory or afferent neurons and we have the interneurons also called as the association neurons and the third one is the motor or the efferent neurons so ano yung function is sensory or afferent neurons so it carries impulses from the sensory receptors such as our specialized sensation or senses such as eyes ears and some other sensory organs such as yung gipos ko nga we have the cutaneous we have the uh, the cutaneous, the mechanoceptors, we have uh, thermoreceptors uh, and some other types of receptors. No? So, as you can see in this one, sige, pag-uusapan natin ito mamaya. Samba natin makikita si sensory or afferent neuron. Then, interneuron association and we have the motor neuron so also called in the interneuron this is also called as the middleman neuron so they are the one which is responsible sila for the interpretation of those information coming from our environment or the internal organs and for the motor is we have they are responsible naman for the muscles and glands so siya yung meron tayong uh, particular na movement or particular responses because of our motor neuron. So, para maintindihan natin siya, tingnan muna natin itong figure natin dito. Okay, so when we say uh, sensory or afferent neuron, and we have also the motor or efferent neuron, yung dalawa po na yan is, kanina, sa na-discuss natin, makikita po natin siya dito. They are part of our peripheral nervous system. Okay. So, peripheral nervous system, di ba? We have this one. They are under the somatic nervous system. While pag sinabi naman natin na interneuron or association neuron, makikita po natin siya in our C and S, no? Both in the brain and the spinal cord. So, remember, our motor or efferent neuron and the sensory or afferent neuron they are located or they are part of the pns or peripheral nervous system particularly on the somatic nervous system while yung middleman neuron natin or interneuron they are located on the cns particularly on the brain and the spinal cord so let me check or let us uh, look into the figure here as you can see here uh, saan natin makikita again since it's part of our peripheral nervous system particularly the somatic nervous system so dito po natin makikita si neuron okay si neuron uh, particularly the sensory or afferent neuron siya po yung neuron na ang main function is to carry all the information or impulses going up to this area here then going up to the spinal cord and the brain okay so remember that is the main function of our sensory motor neuron our sensory or afferent neuron so for example with that of the cutaneous sense organ ito yung tinatawa natin na they are located on the skin pag natuso ka ng thumbtacks gagawin niyan is i-interpret yun siya ni sensory neuron or yung messages dadalhin niya pataas no papunta kay spinal cord then going up to the brain for the interpretation so sino po yung magi interpret ng uh, information it is the interneuron and sabi ko nga kanina si interneuron or si middleman neuron is makikita the spinal cord because they are the one they are responsible for the interpretation of those information then right after niya may interpret this time bababa siya through what we call the motor or efferent neuron so kung mababasa niyo yung uh, description ni motor or efferent neuron it carries impulses from the central nervous system down to the muscle and glands so, pagtusok sa'yo, dayon, because 
since a motor neuron is connected to our glands or connected to our muscles, then si muscles is mayroon po tayong, um, it's voluntary, mayroon po tayong ability to control it. Okay, so ta tatanggalin ka agad natin yung kamay natin. So, ganito, tusok, pagkatusok, papasok siya, papunta kay brain using the sensory or afferent neuron. I-interpret siya ng brain ko using the interneurons. Then, baba siya sa muscle of the affected area para makagawa ako ng response ko. So, kung masakit siya, ang gagawin ko, ang response ko, tatanggalin ko yung kamay ko kasi masakit nga. No? So, that is the main function of our neurons. No? The sensory, the inter, and the motor neuron. Okay, so tingnan naman, tingnan na naman natin yung ano yung structure sa natin makikita si sensory neuron, si afferent neuron and si interneuron. So as you can see here, this is a sample of the actual uh, uh plane no, of the what do we call the the spinal cord. Yeah, so this is the spinal cord. Our spinal cord is consist of this one uh, we have this what we call the white matter and the gray matter. Balikan muna natin, for example, yung uh, picture kanina. No? Look at this one. As you can see here, di ba, ito yung spinal cord natin. This is the brain. Pag mag-cut ako dyan ng sample, dito, pag kinat ko yan, ito po yung magiging resulta. Ito po yung makikita natin. Kasi di ba kanina sinabi ko, uh, yung information dapat pasaka siya using our sensory neuron. Then, interpret, or this one, interpret din, then papaba going to the muscle and glands. Then, we make a particular responses based on that external stimulus. Okay, so paano siya, nag paano siya nangyayari? Ito po yung itsura niya. This is the back portion and this is the um, front portion. Dorsal, ventral. Okay, in our spinal cord, ito po yung kwan, you know, this is the white matter, this is the gray matter, this is uh, the central canal which contains the cerebrospinal fluid, as you can see here. So, we can divide this, uh, this what we call the gray matter, uh, it's sometimes called the H shape, no, or the uh, what we call the butterfly shape structure of our spinal cord. This is uh, this part of the gray matter here is what we call the dorsal uh, dorsal horn. This one is what we call the lateral horn, and this one is the ventral horn. So as you can see here, sampu ba natin? Bakit kailangan natin pag-usapan itong uh, basic structure ng gray matter natin. Look, di ba kanina tinusok ko ng ball pen? Pagkatusok ka ng ball pen, pupunta po dito yung information. So, this is what we call the sensory neuron kasi nga siya yung nagdadala ng information going up to the central nervous system, particularly on the spinal cord and we have the brain. So, before po siya mag, mapupunta kay um, spinal cord, mag si synapse muna siya dito. This is what we call the ganglion or in particular, this is what we call the dorsal root ganglion. So, bakit siya tinawag na dorsal root ganglion? Kasi nga, nasa likod siya. So, when I say ganglion, it's a group of fibers, no? So, dito nagkakaroon ng synapses before siya magta-travel papunta kay dorsal horn of the gray matter. So, pagpunta niya dito, andyan na po kagad si interneuron, also called as the association neuron for the interpretation. Then, pagkatapos niyan, i-interpret is, ngayon, yung information is ipapasa niya kay motor neuron. This red here represents our motor neuron. Then, as you can see, lalabas po siya sa ventral part of our spinal cord until such time na magta-travel na siya papunta dito kay effector. So, kung ano yung particular parts ng uh, muscle or skin ng affected, no? Doon po siya magre-react. Okay. So, as you can see, for example, if this neuron is 
uh, nagalit siya papunta kay skin of your right hand so dapat itong motor is sa right hand din ito siya dapat patungo so that we can make an appropriate responses on those uh, stimulus so ito siya sa senses sa cutaneous this one naman si motor is makikita natin siya through the muscles okay so kaya nga pwede natin siya i-move so i hope you understand the uh, structure no para nagkakaroon ng signal transmission okay so we are done with the process of the transmissions of those signals okay by the way babalikan pa natin yung uh, neurons natin mamaya no kasi uh, meron tayong titingnan na process mamaya ko ano yung mangyayari but beside those uh, different basic functional and structural unit of our nervous system we have also this what we call the glial cells or the neuroglia so we, as you can see um, it came from the greek word which means glue which are the most abundant cells uh, outnumbering the neurons 10 to 1 so in one neuron we have at least 10 or approximately 10 um, glial cells or neuroglia no? so its main function is to provide the support to our neurons so what is the largest glial cells in the human body so it is what we call the astroglia also called as the star shape no um, glia or glue then there are main two types of the glial cells or neuroglia and these are the oligodendrocytes they are located on the central nervous system and the schwann cell kanina nakita natin no schwann cell is they are located on the peripheral nervous system okay so as you can see in this picture these are the uh, structure of our neuroglia okay we have the satellite cells and we have the schwann cells for the central nervous system, we have the microglia, the smallest uh, glial cells, then ependymal cells, the oligodendrocytes, and the astrocytes. And in terms of the properties of the neuron, uh, these are the main properties. No? The main function is for irritability and for conductivity. When we say irritability, that is the ability of the neuron to respond to a particular stimulus. Kagaya nung sabi ko kanina, kapag ka, um, nakaapa ka ng pako or naka, nasugatan yung kamay mo, then agad-agad magkakaroon tayo ng particular response. And that is what we call the irritability. Then conductivity naman, it is, uh, this refers to the ability to transmit an impulses so yung kanina impulses when i say impulses these are the messages which are coming from our glands or internal organ and also in our environment so using our uh, skin receptors mafeel natin or nafeel natin yung environment natin because of the ability of this neuron to <coughs> uh, transmit impulses and that is what we called the conductivity now let's look into the synapses but before that i-review muna natin kung ano yung nangyari dito kanina sa neurons natin so sabi ko nga babalikan natin yung neurons natin no look at this one so in our previous videos uh, napag-aralan natin yung mga different structural and functional uh, parts of our neuron which is the basic uh, unit of our nervous system no and as you can see here again this for example this is the neuron a neuron b and the neuron c right after the neuron c meron naman po tayo ditong neuron d uh, efg and so on sobrang dami pong neurons no so Paano ba nagkakaroon ng impulses or transmission of impulses? Kagaya nga ng sabi natin kanina, mayroon properties yung neurons natin. And these are the ability to respond to a particular stimuli or stimulus and the ability to transmit impulses. So in terms of the ability to uh, transmit impulses, also called as the conductivity, ang ginagawa po natin is from that of our... Um, 
skin receptors, pupunta po siya kay dendrites, then si dendrites ipapasa niya kay axon, then papunta kay axon, pupunta po siya dito. Okay? Ang tawag po natin sa message na to siya, wherein nagja-jump po siya using the different neurotransmitters here or chemicals here. Ang tawag po natin sa impulse na to is we have the chemical messages or chemical impulses. Pagabot niya dito kay dendrites, uh, again, dendrites is the one that receives all those impulses. Magiging electrical impulses na po yung tawag natin dyan. Chemical kasi it involves chemicals and those chemicals are what we call the neurotransmitters. Pag abot niya dito, pag target na kay neurotransmitter, pupunta dito si impulses. Again, ang tawag natin sa kanya is electrical impulses. So all in all, ang major term talaga natin sa process na to or ang major term natin sa Impulses is what we call the electrochemical impulses. Kasi nga, from that of electrical impulses, mag-change po siya into chemical responses. Makikita natin yung mamaya. So, di ba, papunta siya dito, then ini sinasama siya ni Soma, then papunta kay Axon Hilak, down to this area, until maabot siya dito kay axon button terminal. So, as you can see, nag-draw po ako ng sample dyan because this time makikita po natin kung ano yung mayroon, ano yung nangyayari. Bakit yung electrical impulses is nag-change po siya into chemical impulses. So, let's look into this one. Where is my neuron D? Okay, so this is the neuron D. So, di ba, lahat-lahat niyan is, they are connected. They are all connected. So, as you can see here, if this is the neuron A, B, and C, si neuron C this time is magko-connect siya doon kay neuron D, this one. And as you can see, hindi po yan sila naka-attach, no? Meron pong small gap. And let's look into this small gap. Okay, nag-drawing po ako dyan ng uh, square para makita po natin yung itsura nung uh, tinatawag natin na um, vesicles and even the synapses or the synaptic cleft which is uh, considered as the smallest uh, space between the uh, neurons. So, ganyan po siya. Kung nagkaroon tayo ng message dito, magta-travelin siya papunta dito. The travel papunta dito, that's the chemical or the what we call the electrical messages. Papunta siya kay axon button terminal. Ipapasa niya ngayon yung impulses using chemicals called the neurotransmitter to the other neuron. And this is now the neuron D. The same pa rin yung structure natin. Si neuron D, meron pa rin siyang soma, nucleus, axon hilak, dendrites. We have just one cell, myelin sheath, the axon, and the axon button terminal. But let us look into this area here. Since mayroon po tayong space between our neurons, now this is how it looks like na. This one. This is the synaptic cleft. Okay. So, di ba kanina nag-drawing tayo? This is how it looks like. This one. Two neurons. Pag nag-draw ako dyan, yan po kagad yung makikita natin. Okay? Yan. And this is what we call the synaptic cleft, also known as the synapses. Paano ba nagkakaroon or paano ba natatransmit yung information from that of the electrical impulses going to the chemical impulses? Since ang term po natin sa impulse na to is electrochemical impulses, as you can see in the picture, This one, okay? Marami po tayong, <coughs> ano yung tawag natin dito? It is called the synaptic vesicles. In particular, this is what we call the presynaptic vesicles. Why? Because the vesicle is located before the synapses. Kaya tinawag na presynaptic. Okay? Synapses man ito siya. Before synaptic vesicles. So, they are located before the synapses okay so this is the vesicle this vesicle contains what we call the different neurotransmitters and what are these different neurotransmitters these are 
the dopamine, we have the serotonin, we have the GABA, and some other different neurotransmitter no, na involved po in terms of the development of or uh, it involved po sa lahat, lahat ng uh, reactions mayroon tayo no towards the both internal and external stimulus what else aside from the GABA we have also we have the acetylcholine we have noradrenaline or norepinephrine and some other neurotransmitter but we will only look into the major neurotransmitters now so as you can see here ang nangyayari po yung electrical impulses ang ginagawa po ni electrical impulses is tinitrigger po niya yung pag-release ng mga neurotransmitter in this presynaptic physicals pag naka pag na-trigger po niya siya using those electrical impulses, lalabas po this time ang tinatawag natin na neurotransmitter. So this one, for example, this is the vesicles. Pag na-trigger siya ni chemical impulses or electrical impulses, pupunta po yun siya dito sa gilid, okay, sa membrane. Pagpunta po niya dito, magkakaroon tayo ng tinatawag na the process of exocytosis or the process of the release of the neurotransmitters, also called as the chemical messages. And these chemical messages now, from that of the electrical messages, naging chemical messages na po siya kasi magta-travel na po yung messages papunta sa next neuron na naman. So, let's say this is the presynaptic neuron or the axon button terminal. Now, this one, this is considered as our dendrites of the next neuron, the neuron D. These dendrites contains the different receptors, as you can see here. So, for example, di ba sabi ko yung mga neurotransmitter natin? Uh, this might be GABA, we have the dopamine dopamine in particular no then we have the serotonin and some other monoamine neurotransmitter and we have also uh, some we have the amino acid no and neuropeptides but we will only focus on this uh, monoamine so look at this one this is the um, dopamine let's say the red one represents the dopamine papunta po dito hahanapin po niya yung receptor niya then magbabind po siya dyan. Just remember that uh, each neuron, meron po tayong, marami po tayong different types of receptors. And each neurotransmitter po, meron siyang corresponding receptors. So for example, this block here represents the serotonin. Paglabas niya, hahanapin niya ngayon kung, hahanapin niya ngayon kung ano yung particular uh, receptors para dun siya magbabind, saan siya na belong. Okay, so pagbind niya dito, then, magkakaroon tayo ulit ng electrical signals on the other neuron na naman. So, again, ano yung tawag natin sa pag-release ng neurotransmitter? This is what we call the exocytosis. So, hindi po lahat-lahat um, nagbabind, no? So, for example, it, it, it happens, in fact, no? so, napakabilis na, uh, napakabilis po ng uh, activities na to, no? So, for example, pag-release ni dopamine or let's say ni serotonin, ang mangyayari in the synapses, after niya mag-bind, some other neurotransmitters will go back to this uh, physicals. And that is uh, the process called the reuptake. Okay, pag reuptake niya, papasok siya kay tinatawag natin na transporter. So, this is what we call the transporter. So, babalik yung neurotransmitter through transporter going back to the vesicles. But for some, hindi na po yun sila makakabalik, hindi na po magre reuptake So, ang mangyayari this time is, yung mga natitirang neurotransmitter dito is... Um, i-degrade na po yan siya ng tinatawag natin ng mga enzymes. So, a good example of enzyme is, uh, let's say, the monoamine oxidase. Um, these are the enzymes that breaks down or uh, degrade all of these uh, remaining neurotransmitter. So, pag nag-degrade na po siya, magiging zero po ulit yung content nitong uh, synapses natin or the small gap between two neurons. Okay, so the same yung process, uh, another one na naman, magpa-process, pupunta dito yung dopamine, then magkakaroon ng binding. Pag nag-bind na po sa kanilang particular receptors, 
then mako-convert na naman ito siya into electrical messages. So kung dito electrical messages, it triggers the release of the neurotransmitter. Now it becomes the chemical messages. Pag bind ni chemical messages dito kay receptors niya, then it will now become the another electrical impulse of the other neuron. So remember the process. That is what we call the exo cytosis okay by the way when we say um, serotonin it is also term or it is also called as the 5 hydroxytryptamine okay and meron po siyang different receptors for example si subtype a b c or 1 2 3 the same also with the dopamine we have the d 1 2 3 4 5 so these are the uh, receptors na meron tayo with that of the dopamine. So, papunta yan siya dyan, then magiging impulse sa sulit. Hanggang bumalik, ng, pabalik balik na yung process, no? Hanggang maabot siya sa brain. And gano po siya kabilis na process. In fact, uh, it's a matter of millisecond lang para ma-receive natin yung information. And we have to interpret it then to make a particular responses. Okay, so this is uh, the another representation. Sending neurons, these are the neurotransmitter, this is the transporter, and these are the specific receptors of each neurotransmitter. So, makiba po yan sila, no? Depende. We have possible D1, D2, D3, D4, 5HT1, uh, 2, 3, and so on.